here we go again now again the point of 11a was to say the foci of each of these chapters we're just going to review it real quickly again Matthew 24 25 is global with the theme of the democratization of Bible meaning salty when it gets kidnapped it means people aren't interested in it and that is saltless you remember the parable the Lord told you are the salt of the earth this is about the salt trail of history Christians being interested or disinterested in the Bible that's Matthew 24 and 25 it's global that's its theme and it goes to 3243 AD as a paradigm because that is 71050s from Adam's fall not from the creation of the earth from Adam's fall it's a paradigm to play on the Talmud because when Jesus is there he's talking to Jews okay next focus is going to be Ephesians 1 and Luke 21 uh, Ephesians 1 runs through the first 490 years from Christ's birth Luke runs it all the way to the first thousand years after and there's a sort of special dating formula that he uses but it's set at the same time as Matthew in Luke's case he's going to veer off once Christianity hits um, Rome he veers off to just stay in the western zone in other words the barbarians take over Rome in 476 AD under Odovacher and his thousand years is covering the west including the time after the barbarians take over so he picks up basically he overlaps with Matthew and he overlaps with Ephesians 1 but then he goes past Ephesians 1 and still ties to Matthew 24 in other words the timing in Matthew 24 and the timing in Luke 21 are the same but the text is different there's a specific reason for that which we're going to see during this episode 11 not maybe in this segment but it's I'm going to cover it third again review Mark is also tracking to Matthew 24 and to Luke this is what proves Mark is the third gospel as well as the other proofs I've given you in the synoptics videos Mark is going to veer off to the east he tracks with both Matthew and Luke he, he goes by both of them their syllable counts to track his own and then once Odovacher takes over western Rome which he also tracks then he veers off to the east now when I was initially doing these videos I did not know that Eastern Orthodox Greek or Russian consider Mark to be their apostle whether he really went there or not I don't know but that is what he tracks as the East so maybe there's some truth to their claim okay and then finally Revelation 17 is sort of like full circle this is like how Greek drama works and Revelation 17 is cast in the language of Greek drama just as Matthew 24 is global so also Revelation is global and it covers both East and West and again it goes from Rome under the pagans all the way up to Constantinople okay at the end of its you know chapter which ends at 956 AD and it's punny it's deliberately punny because he's making a pun on the wives in both Constantinople and in Western you know under the barbarians so he is linking Revelation ties meter to Mark Luke and Matthew now hopefully you're starting to get the impression oh my god if they're matching each other on their syllable counts that means the syllable counts we have are the same as what they used yeah and it also means it's so precise that you are not left in doubt about what these words mean you know a lot of humor 
And a lot of wit depends on, on the usage of common words. Like if I say windows, but I spell it W-I-N-D-O-Z-E, it sounds the same as the common word windows. But obviously it means something else. Okay? We use a lot of euphemisms. You know? And they do too. They use common words are often used as euphemisms for something quite specific that at that time in the culture they knew. Oh boy, here's the siren again. Wait a minute. Sorry. can't shut this off while they go on. I live near a police station. That's why you hear sirens so often in my recordings. Okay. So, Mark, I mean, Matthew, up here at the top, Matthew at the top is global. Revelation at the bottom is global. Matthew is focused on the democratization of the Bible. Revelation is focused on how the rulers thought they were important and he's tracing out the sort of biography of the future Antichrist by using what we would consider to be past occurrences because it was all yet future in Revelation because the Antichrist could occur at any time so he was it's a map of the characteristics of the Antichrist had the rapture occurred then because you know the rapture can take place any minute Okay, the minute it takes place, there's already a historical setting of people in power and people on the ground and what they believe and all that stuff. So if the rapture happened, say, ten years from when Revelation was written, which this actual ten tells you it was written in 88 AD. It's a long story that I don't have time to go through right now. But I've already documented it in my John, Meter, John Dateline Meters uh, PDF which you can download so you can see how I got it. But, you know, if, if the Antichrist, if the rapture was going to occur, say, the day after John wrote this, then you would know something about the characteristic of the time from the text. All right? And as he keeps on going, okay, like this here, all right? See, 10 years from when he writes would be 98 AD. That would be the end of Nerva. Okay, Nerva died in 98 AD. So if the Antichrist was going to come when Nerva died, then Angelon would be messengers. Well, that's pretty hysterically funny because that's what Revelation 14 covered. Messengers. There would be messengers flying high in the sky. That's Revelation 14. Telling you that, you know, hello, the rapture's occurred. This is now the tribulation. They fly at high noon in every time zone, every day. You know, that's what uh, Revelation 14 covers. It's another chapter on it, too. But that's the first half of the tribulation. When the two witnesses suddenly arrive. And they're not, they're not resurrected. They're actual Jewish believers who, recognize, who become believers due to the, the tribulation starting. Okay, but it could have happened in 98 AD. That's 10 years from when John's writing Revelation. And then you got Trajan dying here, okay? And what was the big deal about Trajan dying, as I covered in prior videos, is everything about his dying was due to what he said. So the word saying marks his death. Because that was a big brouhaha. What was he saying when he died? Who is the, who is the guy to take over me? What well, was Trajan? And so the next word here, duro, come that's exactly what was said to Trajan when Trajan came from Syria to take over the kingdom he didn't come right away okay he was in Syria when Trajan died in August I think it was August of 117 okay so that's really hysterical all right so I, I cover that here so you can read about it anyway all these things track all right, 
So in the case of Revelation, what's different about it versus Matthew is that Revelation is pointedly, sorry, Revelation is pointedly against the rulers because it, its purpose is to trace out the sort of, uh, what do you want to call it, poster boy of the Antichrist. And each one of the rulers it maps has some characteristic in common with what will be the final Antichrist. So you know what to expect if that happens during your year. Okay. In our particular case, all these Antichrists mapped have finished. Okay, and the last one is just hysterical. I almost died when I found this. Because I had to research who the heck was being covered for each one of these numbers. I didn't know. Okay. You come down here to the end. That's 956 AD. The whole thing where he ends it focuses on a woman named Theophano, except that there were two of them. The one depicted here for 956 would end up becoming a widow and her lover will name his niece Theophanu also and the one he names as his niece Theophanu is going to end up marrying Otto the third or is it Otto the second in the west and that's really important because they were all expecting the rapture to well they didn't believe in the rapture at that point they were expecting Christ to come back same myth that Russia believes today. So he's making a play on the same name of two different women who happen to be related to the same guy. They aren't related to each other. They're related to a guy. And you don't know that until you know the history. But if it was going to happen, if that was going to be the Antichrist, if Otto II was going to be the Antichrist, or this guy is Romanus II, if he was going to be the Antichrist, then you would need to know that at that time. Because maybe you'd have to get out of Dodge, namely Constantinople, and get out of, um, uh, what do they call it, Aachen, which is where, you know, Charlemagne's ancestors went. I mean, the uh, progeny went. And I don't just mean progeny from his blood, because at that point his line had died out. It was progeny as far as uh, royalty was concerned. Because the guy who took up the throne in 962, 956 is before that, of course. In 962, Otto I was not blood related to Charlemagne. Okay, he was from a different house. I forget which one. So you see, this is a tracing strictly of the rulers to, to satirize. To satirize how people who are rulers and people of the world, they get all bound up with Caesar rather than God. Okay? And that's the, the prototype for what's happening today under Trump. It's the same story repeating itself. That's why this is relevant to us now. So again, Revelation is also global, but it focuses on the rulers, whereas Matthew, which is also global, has some things it says about the rulers, but it's mostly about Bible and how it gets opened and shut because of believer interest or disinterest. Okay? So I think that's where I'm going to stop for the moment because I need to fix this, I think. I wonder if you can see it enough. I got I to gotta get something to drink and I'll come back in a, in a minute or two.